What's up guys, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to stop missing your spots as a pitcher and how to start commanding the baseball with ease. And I got a question from Lobo Sierra, and he asked, I don't know if this is due to flying open or staying too close, but my son's pitching, he's a right-handed pitcher, are hard and pretty straight, but always end up inside as if hitting a right-handed batter. I told him to aim at the catcher's outside shoulder instead of the mitt, he connects right down the middle of the plate. Any idea what's going on? Thanks for all your awesome videos. Yeah, I've got a few ideas and I wanna share that with you here in this video. Thank you so much for your question, but before we get into it, I wanna say thank you to Victory for sponsoring this video. Victory is a custom performance insole designed to return the energy an athlete generates as explosive power. Put simply, this will make you run faster, jump higher, and be an overall better performer on the field. Worn by over 150 pros who shaved off a tenth of a second on their 60s and added 1.6 inches to their verts. You can try the Victory Insoles 2 risk-free for 30 days at the link below. So the very first thing that you have to do, and I, I think you've done a good job with this already, is identify the issue. Now you've got it narrowed down to what you think it is, whether it be either too opened or him too closed off is why he's missing arm side as a righty to right-handed batters, right? So you did a great job there. But typically, without seeing your son throw, I've never seen your th son throw, so I can't tell you for sure. But typically, it's usually because guys are opening up. I'm gonna tell you why, so you can pay attention to this to see if this is the issue. When guys, right-handed pitchers, tend to open up, their energy starts to pull this way, leak this way, right? They're open, if I'm trying, pitching straight to you, and I fly open this way, my energy's leaking this way, so all of the excess energy is gonna come out this way, meaning I'm gonna leave my arm behind and the ball's gonna fly out arm side. Let me explain it to you this way. This is the way I like to think of it because it's easier to understand this way. If I had a flag pole and I'm running this way with the flag and the pole, the flag's gonna be going this way even though my energy's going this way, right? Same thing with pitching. If I'm going this way with the flag pole, the flag is gonna be flying out that way, right? So my arm and the ball's gonna be going this way. I'm gonna release it a little earlier I'm, I'm typically gonna be arm side and up in the zone with a little bit of run as a right-handed pitcher, which is the problem that you are having. So that makes me think that it may be opening up too much. So the second thing you wanna think about is how do we fix this issue, right? So typically, if we're flying open and we're, and we're leaving this behind, we wanna get a little bit more linear because we're very rotational, right? If we're yanking out this way and the arm's going this way, we're very rotational, right? So we wanna think, get a little more linear at the, at the end, at the finish of the delivery. So instead of yanking out, maybe we tell the player to think about coming down. One term or cue that I used to like to use as a coach, and even for myself when I was pitching, was thinking about bringing the chest to the glove instead of the glove to the chest. You hear bring the glove to the chest a lot, but when I would like to think about it would be bring the chest to the glove. That helped me get a little bit more linear at the end of the delivery so I can kind of get that last pull down and get more straight on line as opposed to being very rotational and flying out. This happens a lot, by the way, so don't get discouraged with your pitcher because it's gonna happen. But the, the quicker the pitcher can learn how to make these small adjustments in his delivery, the better he's gonna, the quicker he's gonna get back on track, right? So we need, as coaches, we need to teach them the tools they need to make quick adjustments in the game because we can sit there and yell from the dugout all day long, hey, you know, get more linear at the, at the end. But if he doesn't know what that means and he doesn't know what it feels like to make it happen, we can yell all day long, nothing's gonna happen. We gotta give him the tools to understand how to feel his body and make those quick adjustments so when he's out there, he can make them quick. The third thing is we gotta stay consistent. So once we find the fix, once the player has the fix, we gotta make sure he's staying consistent with it. And as the pitcher, the pitcher needs to be as consistent as possible because if he has a repeatable delivery, the more repeatable, the more consistent he can be in his delivery, the more consistent and repeatable he's gonna be in the strike zone. Meaning, if he is one pitch getting a little bit more linear, the next pitch he's very rotational, he's gonna have huge differences in outcomes at the plate, right? So focusing on consistency within the delivery is gonna be huge for the pitcher seeing success and having better command with the baseball in the pitching zone. Number four is to set your sights. And you actually talked about this in your question, so you're right on track. Setting your sights is a, a great technique to use for guys that have issues with this. For example, you said instead of throwing to the catcher's mitt, you wanna throw to his right shoulder or 
looking at him, the left side, his left shoulder, from your perspective, the pitcher's perspective. I used to do this all the time pitching, especially on my breaking balls. I would know how much that ball is going to move, and I would set my sights accordingly. So if I was throwing a slider, my slider moved about this much at this angle. So instead of throwing it to the catcher's glove, I may throw it at the hitter's hands and try to break it to the catcher's glove. So that's a great technique that you can use with your player. If that's helping him and it's working for him, keep that up. Setting your sights is a great way to you know, understand the movement of your balls, set it up, and have good success. Whatever's working, keep it. If it's not working, get rid of it. But that's a great technique that I used to use as well, and I think if it's working, you should stick with it. Number five is to believe in the pitch, right? You have to have full belief in your pitch before you go to throw it. If you're second guessing it, or you've been missing arm side, and you are in your head going, man, I hope I don't miss arm side right here. Guess what? You're probably gonna miss arm side right there. So you have to have the full belief in your pitch. If the catcher calls fastball outside and you're worried about throwing it inside and hitting the batter, good luck. You have to overcome that. You have to overcome that with positive self-talk. You have to overcome that with just understanding and having the confidence behind your pitches, meaning it's, it's, it's riding that line between not caring and not caring about the little stuff, meaning it's good to care, right? You wanna care. You wanna have passion about the game and care about the outcome. But if you care about the little things like missing inside or even hitting the batter, you know, you can't worry about those little things. You just have to go out there with full confidence in that pitch. I don't know about you guys, but there's been some times in my career where the catcher would give a, uh, you know, say fastball inside and I would go, uh, I'd second guess it and then I'd go, okay, whatever, I'll throw it anyway. And usually you end up missing the spot or hitting the guy or the guy getting a hit off of you because you don't have full belief in that pitch. You have to have full belief and full confidence in your pitches when you throw them if you want to have success with them. That's just a fundamental that I've learned over the years. You have to believe in it. You have to believe you're the man up there. If you're worried about that guy beating you, that he can beat you, you're giving him the chance already in your mind to beat you. You can't do that. You have to go out there. Even if he can beat you, maybe he's a great hitter and chances are he is going to beat you. You can't think that way. You have to say, I'm the man. I'm throwing this pitch where I want to. Hit it if you can, sucker. Number six is to throw bullpens in your head. And what do I mean by that? Is just visualize it. As pitchers, we can't go out there and throw hundreds and hundreds of pitches to work on our command and our accuracy, right? We just can't do it. Our arms will fall off. Hitters can get out there and take a bunch of swings. We can't do that as pitchers, unfortunately. But what we can do is we can throw bullpens in our head. Meaning, all I want you to do is, whether you're laying down in bed at night before you go to bed or before practice or before a game, just sitting there, just close your eyes and imagine a catcher there and feel yourself going through your pitching delivery. Make it very visceral. Visceral just means that you can feel it in your body while you're thinking about it, okay? So try to make it very realistic. And when you're doing that, imagine yourself throwing those pitches and hitting the spot perfectly every single time you throw it, okay? Throw 20 or 30 pitches in your head, just sitting there. You don't even have to go through the mo, you don't have to even be standing up. Just sit there, close your eyes, lay down if you want to, close your eyes, visualize it, but hit the catcher spot every single time. Move them around. Imagine yourself being dominant on the pitcher's mound and just hitting every spot that that guy calls, okay? What's gonna happen? You're gonna feel more confident. You've already had success in your mind before you even get out there to the field. Also, there was a study done in Australia that showed that imagining this can actually help. They did it with darts, it wasn't with baseball, but hear me out here. The guy who was a right-handed thrower, they made him throw darts lefty. So he threw darts, they measured the distance away from the bullpen, and then for one month, all he was allowed to do was imagine throwing darts lefty and hitting the bullseye, five minutes a day. He did that for one month, came back, threw darts again left-handed. He wasn't allowed to touch a dart the whole time, just visualize, threw darts again, and he was twice as close to the bullseye this time out of all the darts, and he hit the bullseye a couple times left-handed. So to me, that shows that this is a valuable, valuable technique. And if we could just sit there for five minutes a day, whether we're before we go to bed or before the game or before practice, five minutes a day, throw a perfect bullpen, we're gonna be better pitchers, be able to command the baseball a lot better. The seventh thing is to get stronger for better balance and consistency, right? If we can be strong and balanced moving down the mound and we're not falling all over the place, we're strong within our delivery, we move well down the mound, guess what? 
we're going to be able to be more consistent. I talked about consistency earlier uh, in this video, but this is how we become more consistent. We get stronger. So we do workouts. We do a lot of ab stuff. We do a lot of hips and core stuff. We do a lot of stability stuff because we want to be balanced and strong moving down the mountain. If we're flying everywhere and we're off balance and, we're, and our knee's weak, our front leg is weak, which is a huge issue I see with a lot of pitchers, the front leg, if that's happening, we cannot be consistent. So we first have to be strong to be consistent. We have to be balanced to be consistent. So work on becoming a strong pitcher. Start working out if you haven't already. Even if you're younger, you could do some body weight stuff. If you're older, get in the gym. Be strong, be balanced to be consistent. And last but not least, number eight, you gotta practice at full speed, right? Because I see what happens when I see guys working on their accuracy or their command in pitching they tend to slow down. They want to slow down to be more accurate. They, they feel like when they go too fast, it's harder to control, and it is. But if you slow down every time you're working on it, you're never going to get good at being accurate while you're pitching fast, and we don't want that. We want to be accurate and fast. We want to have pitching command and pitching velocity. We want to have both. The best pitchers in the game, they do both, right? I, I know I hear arguments all the time talking about, well, you have to be uh, accurate with your pitches. Forget about velocity. And you know, you, you know, velocity is the main thing. That's what the scouts look for. Uh, we need to increase our velocity. Guess what? It's both. You have to do both. If you want to be a great pitcher, you have to do both. So to work on your accuracy, work on it at full speed. Don't slow down to try to become more accurate. Stay at your quick, your fast speed, your, your game-like speed when you're working on it, but then work on all those other things that I talked about, being strong to be consistent you know, visualize and work on all those things while pitching fast to get better at your pitching accuracy or your pitching command. Does that make sense? I hope you guys liked that video. Thank you so much. Drop down in the comments below. Let me know what you're working on this season pitching wise. And if you got any videos that you want me to make about pitching, pitching accuracy, pitching velocity, pitching drills, whatever it is, if you got any pitching questions, drop them down there and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, until next time, I'll see you in the next video.